Well, hello everyone. Frankenstein. Real or fiction? About 10 years ago, I had another YouTube channel and I made some videos on that channel. Eventually, I acquired a stalker or two, so I had to shut down that channel and I quit YouTube for a while. But I'd like to represent a video I made about a historical Frankenstein called Andrew Cross. He lived in the early 19th century. He was a literal progenitor, a predecessor of Nikola Tesla. Now, Frankenstein, was he real or not? About 10 years ago, 12 years ago, while doing my PhD, I encountered a book, The Man Who Was Frankenstein. And it was all about this man called Andrew Cross. And I thought, wow, this guy is completely forgotten. Everyone talks about Tesla. No one talks about Andrew Cross, who lived about 100 years before and did very, very similar experiments, as you shall soon see. Frankenstein, was he real or fake? There are Frankenstein towns across Europe. It's not an English name, but apparently Mary Shelley may have attended a lecture delivered by Andrew Cross, a literal electrical wizard. Now, Andrew Cross was quite a, quite a character. He inherited a mansion at Fine, called Fine Court in Somerset at only age 21 because his parents died. And it was 65 acres in size. He was independently wealthy, so he could experiment. He purchased two kilometers of electric cable. He strung them out around his property to measure the voltage of the atmosphere, which he collected in a ball near his house in his laboratory. This laboratory contained paintings by Van Dyck and Rubens. Um, in 1836, a man called Sir Richard Phillips visited and he described seeing 2,500 voltaic piles, 1,500 in use. Cross was known locally in 1827 as the Thunder and Lightning Man because when he would charge and discharge these piles from his atmospheric electricity network, it would make the sound of a cannon. He could do this 20 times a minute. This is just incredible. Um, so Humphrey David visited him in 1827. His house was destroyed by fire in 1896, but the laboratory survived, and many of his writings also survive. He's a Frankenstein because, as well as conducting electrical experiments, he supposedly created life. He was... I would call him an early electric universe theorist. He is the earliest of the electric geologists. Um, and, and I'm so proud to, to, to give this guy more attention because so many people don't know about him. But he um, did experiments in electrocrystallization. Electricity to, to make crystallization go better, smoother, faster. And he noticed one day that insects were forming. Um, and after many days, the insects were fully formed, they started to move their wings. He wrote a paper about this, and he was started to receive death threats. People accused him of playing God, of creating life, of usurping God. And we're talking uh, uh, in an era just prior to Charles Darwin. This was a time when life was short and sweet and bitter, and people were extremely religious and they valued their religion. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I made it maybe 12 years ago, but it's still relevant today and it got a lot of thumbs up in the time I wasn't looking at the channel and it got to 3,000 views. I'd like to reissue it for a new audience. Thank you for your attention. Hi YouTubers, I was very surprised to see that there are very few videos on YouTube relating to a great scientist and pioneer of electrical research named Andrew Cross. Nobody really knows about him and his achievements deserve a lot more attention than they have been getting. Andrew Cross was an Englishman who lived 1784 to 1855 and was in his time a famous and respected electrical scientist. He was a recluse who spent his time conducting experiments, managing and walking around his estate at any hour of the day and in all seasons. This man was a 19th century version of Nikola Tesla. 
Nikola Tesla is famous for building the now demolished Wadencliffe Tower in the early 20th century for electrical research of the atmosphere. 100 years earlier, Andrew Cross purchased 2 kilometres or 1.25 miles of insulated copper wiring which he stretched all over his estate, hanging it from trees and poles and made his mansion the hub for this vast electrical receiver. He even created voltaic pile batteries of 50 jars or more to store charge and was one of the first to do so. He had a steel ball receiver which was continuously receiving charge from the cabling all over his property. It was inscribed with the Latin words, Noli me tangere, don't touch me. One of the maids did touch the ball and ran away complaining that the nasty thing had attacked her. During a thunderstorm, Cross's laboratory would go haywire, with electricity continuously being collected from his property through the cables leading into his laboratory, where the sparks discharged between two steel balls. Once this even occurred without a thunderstorm, and I shall now quote Cross's own words regarding this occurrence. About four o'clock in the afternoon, while I was still reading, I suddenly heard a very strong explosion between two bulbs, and shortly after, many more took place, until they became one integrated stream of explosions, which died away and recommenced with the opposite electricity in equal violence. The stream of fire was too vivid to look at for any length of time, and the effect was most splendid and continued without intermission, save that occasioned by the interchange of electricities for upwards of five hours, and then ceased totally. During the whole day and a great part of the succeeding night, there was no material change in the barometer, thermometer, hygrometer, or wind and nor did the driving rain and fog alter in its violence. The wind was not high, but blew steadily from the northwest. Had it not been for my exploring wire, I should not have had the least idea of such an electrical accumulation in the atmosphere. Cross also had geological theories. He may have been hundreds of years ahead of his time. Unlike today, he considered that geological processes occurred through electrical action, he thought that stalactites adhered to the roof of caves through electrical activity. In this manner, he thought that if electricity was associated with a geological process, minerals could form faster. He tested this in the laboratory with some success. He stressed the need of not employing too strong an electric action in growing crystals and stated, You cannot hurry nature. Too rapid an action throws down the substance in an amorphous state. Atoms seem only to assume a crystalline form when they have time to arrange themselves in a state of polarization to the surrounding atoms. Cross envisaged the preservation of food with electricity. He once stored a fish in a charged solution for months and ordered the chef to prepare it. The chef swore that it was fresh, and the only side effect when they ate it was that it had become tasteless. According to one book entitled The Man Who Was Frankenstein, 1979, by Peter Haining, Andrew Cross gave an electrical lecture and demonstration to Mary and Percy Shelley in 1814. Mary Shelley would go on to write the book Frankenstein in 1818 about a mad electrical scientist who reanimates life from dead tissues. This would perhaps mean that Andrew Cross is the historical Frankenstein. Cross's most famous achievement, one that made the newspapers in 1836, was in fact that he apparently created life. He had been conducting electrocrystallization experiments and noted minute insects appearing in electrified solution. The mystery has not yet been solved, but may simply have been a case of contamination by tiny invisible insect larvae. The discovery caused a great controversy and angry villagers and a priest at one stage attempted to carry out an exorcism at the cross's house, but all save the priest fled as the electric wizard approached and the priest had to carry out the exorcism on his own. Andrew Cross, above all, was an empirical scientist. He told his wife it is better to follow nature blindfolded than art with both eyes open. In other words, it is better to conduct experiments than merely theorize in an a priori manner in order to gain an understanding of the world. Despite his many experiments and great knowledge, his dying words to his wife were, the utmost extent of human knowledge is but comparative ignorance. If you want some primary information about Andrew Cross, I would recommend looking at the Memorial Scientific and Literary of Andrew Cross, the Electrician, written by his widow Cornelia Cross in 1857. I hope you enjoyed this video.